Hello and welcome to the July 18th, 2023 Select Board Meeting for the Town of Berwick. The entire ta uh, board is present along with the Town Manager, Town Clerk, Town Assessor, um, and members of the public. Can we please stand for the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First, we have the approval of our meeting minutes from June 20th, 2023. I will make a motion to approve the minutes as presented. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Next, we have our first public comment. This is not related to the public hearing. Does anybody have a public comment? All right, I will close the public comment. Uh, public hearing for the naming of the baseball field after Denny Moore. This is specifically field B, right? Um, that would be renamed after Denny Moore, who worked with the youth baseball program pretty extensively um, and volunteered in town. Are there any members of the public who wish to speak uh, for or against naming the baseball field after Denny Moore? Okay. Um, what I We have received um, some various emails and you know, private um, correspondence, correspondence um, <laughs> in favor of of the renaming. Um, the main reason we even have a policy for renaming is because people came forward and were in favor of doing that. Um, I have an email here from the president of Noble Youth Baseball, um, and I will uh, read it into the record as the uh, for the public hearing. My name is Ryan McCabe. I am the president of North of Noble Youth Baseball and the commissioner of the Maine Cal Ripken District 1. Uh, on behalf of Noble Youth Baseball and Maine Cal Ripken District 1, I'm writing to you today with unbound support for the dedication of the Miners Baseball Field at Memorial Field in Berwick, Maine, in honor of Denny Moore. It's with great sadness that I learned of the passing of Denny, a man who had become a friend and a mentor, someone who would remind me on every occasion he was given that the game of youth baseball is solely for the betterment of the kids and the community they live in. A bag of life lessons organized into a game, often saying that it would, if we kept the focus on the kids, everything else would work out. I first met Denny in 2012, shortly after Berwick Youth Baseball. Nine-year-olds had won the first New England regional tournament Ever by a main team, I was at the end of the season. I was at the end of the season party at Memorial Field for the team when an older gentleman approached me and introduced himself to me. He explained to me how proud he was that the program had grown so much, and he enjoyed seeing the success that our teams were having. He told me a few stories about how Berwick Youth <coughs> Baseball had come to be, and I could tell the joy that he, these memories brought to his life. I would go and go on in years to come to forge a relationship with Denny as he returned to be an umpire in our program. Denny umpired several Maine state and New England region tournaments in recent years, many on the field that many on the field that should now bear his name. In closing, I would say that the only regret I have in this process is that we didn't make the decision sooner while Denny was still with us. However, it is incredibly well deserved and enshrines his memory forever at a place that Denny once built and was proud to call home. He was a husband, dad, brother, uncle, friend, and family member to many of us. I ask that you please vote unanimously yes in support of this dedication. Does any member of the board wish to speak on this proposal? I'll make a motion that we uh, accept the naming of the minor league field after the Denny Moore. A second. Any further discussion? Um, I'll just add, I, I knew Den, Denny a little bit. Um, he wasn't always the easiest person to deal with, but his heart was always with the baseball. He um, dedicated 
a lot of his summers to the teams and to the youth. Um, it sounds like a uh, fitting thing to do after all his dedication and the work he did there, and uh, I look forward to this. All those in favor? All right. We have no reports of committee, no department reports. We have appointments and presentations. We have several appointments to make tonight. The first is Ken Powers, sewer trustee, three-year term. This is our yes. Please state your name and address for the record, please. It's, uh, Ken Powers, 330 Diamond Hill Road. Um, so you've been on the board for how long now? About two years. About two years? So yeah. you filled in for someone who left? Is that yep. yep. And how's it been going for you? Good. Good. I like it. I'm learning a lot. I didn't know anything about the sewer board prior, but they're very committed. And uh, they're good to work with. They're looking to the future so they can uh, account for everything that's coming up. And uh, how do you feel about the current direction everything's going with the... Uh, the sewer district. Yep, yeah, I like it. I mean, they're, like I said, they're planning for the future and trying to take into consideration everything that's coming up, all the building going on and stuff like that. So. Are there any issues that are not being addressed in your mind? No. no. Does any member of the board have a question for Mr. Powers? No. No. Then I would hear a motion. I'll make a motion that we reappoint. Uh, Ken Powers to the sewer trustee for a three-year term. A second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Welcome back. <laughs> we appreciate your willingness to volunteer. Thank you. All right. Next, we have um, we have three people who are seeking two spots on our planning board. Um, so I will go through them all three and we will make a decision about which two after all have presented um, just state your name and your address and tell us a little bit about yourself and why you want to be on the board uh, first we have Richard Raines hi my name is Richard Raines and my address is 18 Carolyn Drive here in Berwick um, I moved to the town in 1999 and have been a resident ever since. Um, I didn't pay much attention to how town politics or business operated much for quite some time, but as of late, I have taken quite an interest in the process. Um, I've been attending the planning board meetings for about seven months now, uh, watching how things are done, and um, when the absences came up or the, um, the chairs came up to be filled, um, I asked my fiance if I could apply to be on, and she said yes. <laughs> and I needed that permission uh, right up front in order to do this, in order to be here. Um, the reason I want to be on the planning board is that um, I've been a carpenter for about 28 years. Uh, I still am. And I don't believe that currently on the board we have any active contractors. Um, we do have some engineers and some other folks. Um, but I bring a different perspective to looking at projects. Uh, I know, I'll try to be gentle here, I know that engineers and architects do a great job at what they do, but many of them have never swung a hammer to put uh, a pencil to practice. Um, so I am a troubleshooter um, and make things happen on the other end. I support development, but I also support making sure things are done the correct way. For the past 18 years, I've been the Scoutmaster for Boy Scout Troop 313 right here in Berwick. So my job as Scoutmaster is to take young boys and teach them character development, citizenship, and physical fitness and turn them into young leaders and young men. Um, also, ladies nowadays are welcome in the Boy Scouts. Um, I followed the Scout Oath and Scout Law, and if you don't know it, I'm not going to repeat it for you now, <laughs> but I could. Um, so I try to live my life by that, you know, it. and uh, I try to live my life by that as best I can and lead by example. I also subscribe to the theory that there's no right way to do a wrong thing. So I know that there are times when people maybe would like to get 
a project through and sugarcoat some stuff, um, but I believe that a thorough examination of projects um, and how they apply to all our land use ordinances as currently written is important. And uh, I am a, a, an attention to detail kind of guy. So um, I would support myself on the board in order to help make sure that projects are looked at um, fairly but thoroughly so that our town can prosper in a way that is in line with its vision. Does any member of the board have any questions for Mr. Raines? Yeah, I, I, have, I have a few. Uh, first, as a, a fellow carpenter and uh, construction worker, is, uh, I share your uh, feelings about engineers. <laughs> as, uh, um, you said you've been attending the, the meetings for the last seven months or so. Um, in that time, it, have you see, seen things in our ordinances that you think should be changed? What I've seen is ordinances that have more attention paid to them than others, in my opinion. Um, different factors that are on the application for a project that I think need a little bit more highlighting and a little more in-depth looking into. Um, don't want to slow the process down to a crawl, but I think, as I said, a thorough in, invest, in, a thorough evaluation of the project and its impacts on a much broader scale than maybe what I've been looking at the board doing. So, as far as land use ordinances, changes, and whatnot, I do have some things rattling around in my brain. But most importantly, I think a change that I would like to see is a more simplified explanation to the public on how the process works, how a person from the public can be involved appropriately. For example, public comment, public hearing. How many times have we heard that people get those confused when it's okay to speak, when it's not okay to speak on a particular topic? I'm specifically referring to the planning board, not necessarily you guys, but um, I learned all these things by coming to the planning board and watching people like I have this to say oh no you can't say that now this was supposed to be said then and and I just think that a simplified explanation of all that process would allow the public to be more involved in my time coming during those six or seven months five four three public people besides engineers and, and developers at the meetings and, and I think that more people could spend less time on Facebook and more time <laughs> in meetings, learning more accurately how things are done. As a volunteer in Scouts for 18 years, I know that your pay is the same as mine, which is nothing. <laughs> and we do this as volunteers because we care. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here. And I would only want to do this job because I care and would want to do a good job. Just to correct the public perception, is we do get paid. About ten cents an hour if you figure it all out. Yeah, <laughs> well, I don't but the planning board does not. Yeah, Correct. you guys don't even get ten cents an hour. No. I only have to put in an hour a week per scout of scouting time, which you is probably will put more. Yeah, sure, an hour a week. Yeah. I will. Yeah. Uh, but you'll put more in probably with the planning board. To be honest with you, the um, yeah. as a as a builder, uh, I'm assuming that you've done building projects in Berwick and things like that. I have. Okay. Um, as a member of the board. If you have projects that come up before the board, um, you would not be able to participate in those votes. Correct. Sure you, yes. You understand. I would recuse myself completely. Okay. Now you can still sit there and listen to everything, but you can't no. uh, vote on the outcome Correct. as a conflict of interest. Understood. Yes. Um, does anybody else have any questions? No, you're pretty thorough. <laughs> Terrific. All right. Um, take a seat, and we'll get back to you in a All minute. Right. Thank you. Uh, the next person I have on my list is Les Bodwell. How you doing? My name is Les Bodwell. I live at 33 Pigtail Lane. Um, I'm sure you know. I know several of you on the board, and um, a local real estate developer here in Berwick. I've done several projects over the years, um, and I, um, I, I, a lot of things that the guy before me said re resonated really with me that. You know, one of the one of the biggest things that I see coming to the planning board from this side of the table 
is that I think that there's a huge lack of understanding uh, exactly what the planning board's job is and what the planning board can and cannot do. Because I think that, you know, I'm, I'm often the target of the lynch mob with the public hearing because I, people don't like a development in their backyard. Helping people to understand that the planning board's job is to apply the land use ordinance correctly. And that, you know, if a project meets the land use ordinance, then there's a mechanism in place to change that land use ordinance if you don't like it, right? I think it starts here and then it goes to the town council or whatever. But the, the, the planning board cannot uh, change the rules, right? If the rule says that you can build a house here, then the, the planning board really has to apply the land use ordinance. Um, so I think that one of the things, one of the strengths that I bring, I don't know if I'm being, he was very eloquent, so he's a hard, hard act to follow. <laughs> <laughs> one of the strengths that I bring is I understand how the planning board works. I understand how the land use ordinance works. Uh, it made basically a career of the land use ordinance. Um, and, and I think that, you know, it would be a good public service to uh, be on the planning board and help the town, you know, move in the direction that we're looking to go. And I'm very heavily in, invested in this town. I live in the town. My kids live here. My kids go to school here. Um, I own a lot of property in this town. Uh, so, and you know, I, James and I had many conversations in relation to, to the property across the street, the direction of that, and you know, as you guys were putting together the, the zoning for that, the land use ordinance for that. Um, I hope I provided some helpful information on that. Uh, basically, that's that's you know where I'm at. I'm a real estate developer, and I, I you know I work with the land use ordinance. Every single day, so I think uh, be a good, good fit for the planning board. Just for clarity's sake, the the planning board does make recommendations, changes to the land use ordinance. Mm -hmm. It comes to us, and we pass that along. We approve or disapprove it to the voters, and the voters approve the actual changes. So, right. yeah, they they're, they're the ones that actually have the ultimate say over what the land use ordinance says. Um, and of course, like I mentioned with with uh, with Richard, the um, you understand that as a developer, any votes that would have anything to do with your properties, your projects, mm -hmm. things like that, you would have to abstain from. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, does any member of the board have some questions for Mr. Bodwell? You're a developer. We have several developments. How many projects do you have currently going on in Berwick right now? I have one that we're coming to the end of, and I have one that we're uh, doing a sketch meeting on Thursday night for. Okay, so just two. Just two, yeah. Okay. How much time do you have available to dedicate to the position? Sorry? How much time do you have available to dedicate to the position? Um, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty available after 4.30 every day, so <laughs> I, you know, I, I don't know what the requirement is, what it takes, but I well, you just said you were a land developer, so I didn't know if you were real busy. Or... Yeah, no, my work day ends at 4.30. Oh, okay. <laughs> We've also had land developers that are, you know, they come in and out of the state, and they're gone for half the year and stuff like that, so, you know. Yeah, yeah no, I'm, I'm... You're here. I live on Pigtail Lane. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> okay. Uh, James, he mentioned that you guys had talked about land use stuff with the project across the street. Um, has he been helpful? Yeah, I... To kind of spitball ideas at one point or kicking around ideas will be possible across the street and um, yeah it was very helpful to get as a, ideas as a developer and just and I, I, I considered actually uh, buying that project across the street but it just was a little bit beyond my scope of ability at the time mine too believe it or not so <laughs> alright any further questions <laughs> All right, take a seat. We'll be back with you in a minute. Uh, the last person we have is Daniel Hook. Pardon me, my foot fell asleep. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> <Don't fall. laughs> um, hi, my name is Daniel Hook. I'm probably the newest person here. Um, I moved to Berwick about a year ago. Uh, and uh, in that time, fell deeply in love with the town, very excited about development across the street. Uh, fell in love with the school system that my daughter attends and my son will be attending soon. And uh, primarily my interest in the planning board is both to uh, learn more uh, about how uh, this town is growing 
and be able to participate in that function, as well as to uh, yeah, continue to uh, steward the, the growth of this town so that when my kids are old enough to enjoy it and make use of it themselves, uh, that they are as, uh, that it is set up for their use as much as possible. Terrific. Um, professionally, uh, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, professionally, I'm a data engineer. I sit behind a computer every day, uh, but I look at uh, a lot of information. I'm unfortunately one of those uh, despicable engineers that cause lots of problems with dial offering much solutions. Uh, but I do look at lots of information going through and uh, in, in that process analyze that information to draw conclusions from it. So, well, I don't have the practical experience of uh, building developments or in either the uh, the manual or the, the mass sense. Uh, I do have experience in looking at broad uses of information and how to use it effectively and well. Yes, I was looking at your, your application and uh, <laughs> degree in physics, mechanical engineering, and communication? Yes. A degree in all three? Yes. Well, I, I have the communications uh, degree. <laughs> <laughs> but I minored in communications because physics gets dull at times. And communicating with other human beings is helpful to reduce the dull. I, don't know, I study physics in my free time, but you know. <laughs> um, does anyone have any questions? Uh, you said you uh, moved here a year or so ago. What, what brought you to Berwick? We came up to New England to, uh, well, for two main reasons. One, to get closer to family that we rarely saw. Uh, my wife has a sister in Midcoast, Maine, and an aunt in uh, Lee, New Hampshire. So we were looking for a place to split the difference uh, and looked at uh, a couple of different properties in that vicinity, and this is where we saw our kids grow up. Uh, uh, the second reason is the weather. People make a lot of mockery about, you know, it's cold up here, and they have snow. But having moved from Texas and experiencing <laughs> the blissful outside that it is here compared to 110 degrees and swimming pool of level of humidity down there, we're very happy to be here. Yeah. I believe it. <laughs> I've been to Texas in July, and it's not pleasant. <laughs> Uh, in the year that you've been here, have you had an opportunity to either attend or watch any of the planning board meetings? Uh, I've not had an opportunity to attend. Uh, the I've watched through several of the code uh, videos that Iris has put out uh, along with BCM. Uh, I have not yet had time to watch through an entire planning board meeting. So I'm unfortunately the least experienced of the candidates. Okay. Could we get your address? For the oh, yes. Uh, I live at 20 Q Road. Thank you. Way out there on the sticks. <laughs> um, Not really. No. <laughs> uh, any other questions? All right. Take a seat, and we will discuss. <laughs> so uh, we have three applicants for two appointments. Um, all variously were, um, so where am I looking for? Qualified, there we go, in different ways. Um, the first two to apply were Mr. Raines and Mr. Bodwell. Um, by coincidence, I, my personal opinion is I think they're the most qualified for the position that we're currently looking for. Um, but I am open to hearing what anybody else has to think. Um, I'll go next. Um, uh, Mr. Hook, you're pretty new to the town, and I appreciate you being willing to kind of jump in, being only here a year, and being willing to participate in the town already. Um, it, that's that's what we want in our residents, and we really appreciate that. Um, but I, I'm, I'm just kind of going to echo what Noah said, too, is that um, uh, you know, Mr. Powers and Mr. Rainsbring years of experience here in the town 
and the planning board with so much development going on right now across the street and el and developments in the town we need that experience we really do um, so that's kind of where I'm leaning at the moment but uh, but I would also encourage you to attend some meetings participate in some of the committee things that they have and so these come up as we said before the meeting these do come up um, some people have to leave for personal reasons or whatever and there's an opportunity like you are now so you know to appoint or to run for a position and we would encourage you to, to stay connected and and continue to pursue an interest in it you know if something comes up yeah i mean just to echo noah and linda i mean i'm looking at three people who on any given day i'd be happy seeing sitting on the planning board yeah. so that's that's a good problem to have right yeah. um you know looking at um you know, Mr. Raines and Mr. Brown, I mean, I've watched every single one of those planning board meetings. It's what I do to make sure I'm there. You, you guys know and we want how, how <laughs> time intensive that can be and, and what that looks like. Um, you know, some of those meetings are, you know, we were joking about being out here by 9 o'clock tonight, and those run a little longer than that, and, and that could be part of that, and that's not even counting doing a site walk at 4 o'clock, 4.30 in the afternoon prior to that. Um, and, and again, Mr. Hope, the, the kind of second Linda there, I think that's great to see somebody get involved is, you know, that, that quick into town, um, you know, and when we talk about other, other outlets, just based on experience, looking at, you know, comp plan or envision Berwick are, are two things that really need volunteers right now too. So there's, there's, there's avenues to be involved that, that are assets that to be there. But I think just looking at experience and where we're at, um, yeah, I, I would say definitely going with Mr. Reigns and Mr. Powell at this time. I'll hear a motion. <laughs> I'll make a motion to appoint Richard Reigns to the planning board for term ending in December of 2025. Second. Any further discussion? I just want to point out one other thing that Mr. Reigns said. I think it's very important you make a very good point about the fact that um, getting the public to understand the process. Uh, I think both of you actually touched on it. Just because people only tend to pay attention when it affects their new house or their development, and so then they, they oh, I'm going to go to the meeting, but they haven't gone in a while, and they don't understand the process. They don't know when they can speak. And so as the people who are sitting on the board, it's our responsibility to make sure that anyone who attends um, understands at the beginning of the meeting what the process is. Noah does a good job of saying at the beginning of the meeting, not to do with this by anyone having a, a public comment. So I would hope that you would take that, you know, as this moves forward, you would take that back with you um, in the next coming year or two that you serve on the board and continue that, um, that thought process as to making sure the public is fully aware just of the steps so that they have a good understanding and there's not confusion out there. All those in favor? I'll make a motion to appoint Les Bodwell to the planning board for term ending December of 2025. A second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Terrific. I do highly recommend you talk to uh, Jeremy and uh, get um, <coughs> with the Vision Berwick people. And James. No, James. No. James about the comp. The comp yeah, plan James too. with the comp plan as well. Yeah. Just there's there's a lot of access for people to volunteer that they don't always pay attention to or don't know about. But there are ways to be involved in, in the town without getting appointed or elected. Um, and elected is not as fun as it sounds, so. <laughs> You'd bring balance to yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, and your data engineering background, I think, would be very helpful for a comp yeah. um, plan. Yeah. It more than likely be at least one uh, planning board open, seat open come December anyway, so yeah. you only have five months to wait. <laughs> <laughs> Go to a few meetings. <laughs> there we All right, we have no unfinished business town manager report. The lift to the auditorium, ADA lift, is mostly installed. They hope to wrap it up by Thursday or Friday this week. And then once it gets its state inspection, it'll be ready to go. Just in time for the June election. <laughs> Almost. Almost. <laughs> the uh, playground equipment from Memorial Field has been delivered. 
The installation date is dependent on the company's installer availability. Uh, the work on the retaining wall has begun. This is the retaining wall for the tennis slash pickleball court. Um, final grading for both courts is needed, and soon after that, um, we'll start seeing some pavement. So Memorial Field has been a couple years in the making, but we'll start seeing a transformation in the next few months. Uh, I have a request to transfer funds for some overages. Uh, there's a handout that has the end of the year reports. Um, first one is transfer funds from town administration to town clerk. And all that happened with town clerk is that there was an employee change which uh, had a difference in um, health insurance. So that's for $1,800. I'll make a motion that we transfer $1,800 from the town administration account to the town clerk's account. A second. Oh, go ahead. Second any, motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? The second request is for recreation. Um, there is an overage in summer camp from last summer camp. Also, there is a planned addition of a administrative assistant program coordinator. Uh, through the middle of the fiscal year. So that amount is 75240 to cover those costs. Uh, the total balance in the recreational uh, revenue reserve is it's, it's just under $300,000. I'll make a motion that we transfer $75,240 from the re recreation revenue fund to the recreation. I'll second, second that. Any further discussion? Just sit here in silence for a second. <laughs> All those in favor? <laughs> and just to be clear to the public, this is just balancing the books from the previous budget, not nothing to do with the current budget, which was started on July 1st. That completes my report. Does anyone have any questions for the town manager? All right. Um, Select board communications. There are none. Approval of accounts payable and payroll warrants. There's a lot, so bear with me. <laughs> yeah, I think it's been five weeks. <laughs> <laughs> payroll warrant number 86 from June 29th, 2023, in the amount of $77,746.06. Accounts payable warrant number 87 from June 30th, 2023, in the amount of $198,822.86. Accounts payable warrant number 88, from June 30th, 2023, in the amount of $253,927.69. Accounts payable warrant number 89, from June 30th, 2023, in the amount of $1,362.50. Payroll warrant number one from July 6, 2023, in the amount of $88,561.79. Payroll warrant number two from July 13, 2023, in the amount of $111,923.64. Accounts payable warrant number three from July 18, 2023, in the amount of $401,309.09. Payroll warrant number four from July 20th, 2023, in the amount of $92,641.91. I make the motion that we pay our bills. Second it. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Bills paid. No more. All right. Uh, new business, personal property write-off request. Hello. Request to write off. Uh, it's for a medical marijuana production facility from 398 School Street. We've seen quite a bit of turnover in there. Uh, this specific business went out of business in June. The assessment date was April. Due to the proximity of the assessment date to the business closing and the fact that we're not, it's not expected for this business to reopen in Berwick, I am recommending to write off the full amount of $748 and. 
56 cents. Just to be clear, this is June of last year. June of last year, yeah. Okay. June right. of 2022. Yep. Yeah. Any questions? On your motion. Yeah, I'll make a motion to write off the <clears throat> amount of $748.56 to Garson's and Thumb Medical Marijuana Production Facility. I'll second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? All right. We have received our assessment from the York County, and uh, we don't have to vote on this. This is just basically a notice to the public. Um, they've assessed us uh, $400,006.53 $400, um, for this pat for this year. And um, we have to pay it. So it's really all there is to say. Anybody <laughs> <laughs> else has any opinions on it? We want to go to war with your county. The great war of secession. Um, all right. We are at, uh, we have no quick claims. We have abatements and supplements. Welcome to the party. <laughs> hey, Paul. Thank you. Paul McKinney from Municipal Resources. Um, okay, the first one is uh, property on map R1, lot 9-C, 467 Hubbard Road. Uh, the subject property is a single family dwelling with several outbuildings. It was brought to our attention that there was an error in two of the outbuildings. The errors have been corrected, and as a result, the correction um, in the assessed value has reduced by $70,700 from $431,600 to $423,900. Um, it is recommended that an abatement in the amount of $140.26 be granted. Yeah, I'll make a motion to approve the abatement of $140.26 to MAP lot R001-9-C. A second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. Um, the next four are um, the same property owner, part of a um, subdivision. It's... Um, Map U1, lot 61, 2D, 2C, 2B, and 2A. Um, so the subject parcel, um, the developer or the person that owned this um, created five individual deeds and recorded those deeds without going through planning board approval. So therefore, these are not buildable lots, or they weren't buildable lots as of April 1st. We're working with the with the person to try to resolve the, uh, the issue. But as of April 1st of 2022, they were not buildable. So um, what I'm recommending is that we reduce the values to a, a non-buildable lot, which is 10% of what the, the value would be. Um, so for lot 61-2D, uh, the assessed value would be reduced $34,600 from 43200 to 8600 it is recommended that an abatement in the amount of $630.41 be granted. Do you want to do these individually, or should I just do them all together? So it's all different amounts, so if we could do them individually. Right, I have a question. So sure. this is because they're non-buildable lots. Yeah. That's how they filed a deed, as they, a non-buildable lot. No, they just filed the deed as a, as a normal lot transfer to the same person. They just took one piece of land divided it into five lots and created five individual lots of record without going through the planning board. So this wasn't an assessment error on our part. No. It was a filing error on their part, and they realized it within the year and come back for an abatement. Yes. Okay. So we're we're changing this and reducing it so that it's a non-buildable law, but what right. happens if they decide? Then we, will, question. then we will correct that at this time. You know, okay. at that time. So once it goes through the planning board, right. then right, yeah, the then value. Iris it. won't issue a building permit, or she couldn't issue a building permit as of April first of twenty two. So okay. hypothetically, if in a year they it, it becomes yep. a buildable lot, um, then they'll have to repay the amount that we're currently abating right now. 
or no? No. no. Moving it, forward. It will then because okay. every assessment goes on the April 1st you know, date. Yep. So as of April 1st of 22, it wasn't a buildable lot. As of April 1st of 23, it wasn't a build buildable lot. So I, d I have reduced them for this year going forward. If something happens and they create the lots, they either go before the planning board, they merge the lots together, then we'll reassess the situation and build them build in accordingly, according to what Got they it. can do to the property. But right now, they can't, or back then, they couldn't get a permit. Shane, just to be clear, if they wanted to merge them together, they'd have to wait five years, wouldn't they? They can't, well, in this particular instance, they're in one lot, you created five. But you could create that one into two, and that wouldn't be a problem. Okay. All right, so we have the first one, which is uh, 2D. Is that what we're, we're talking about right now, right? Yes. yes. All right, so uh, we have to do these individually because they're all different amounts. So uh, I'll, I'll, I'll make a motion, motion that we uh, grant the abatement <coughs> amount of $630.41 for Math and Lot U00161-2D. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. Uh, next one is U001, lot 61, 2C. Uh, assessed value be reduced from 33,300 from 41,600 to 8,300. It is recommended that an abatement in the amount of $606.73 be granted. I'll make a motion to grant the abatement in the amount of $606.73 for map and lot U001612C. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. Uh, next one is U001, lot 612B. Uh, the assessed value has been will be reduced from uh, by 35000 from 56100 to 21100 it is recommended an abatement in the amount of six hundred and thirty seven dollars and seventy cents be granted. I'll make a motion to grant the abatement of the amount of six hundred thirty seven dollars and seventy cents be on map and lot U zero zero one six one two B. Second the motion. Uh, no discussion, I imagine. All in favor. Okay, and the last one, U001, lot 61, uh, 2A, uh, assessed value be reduced from 35,000, uh, we reduced 35,000 from 43,700 to 8,700. Uh, it is recommended an abatement in the amount of $637.70. Be granted. Okay. I'll make a motion to grant the abatement in the amount of $637.70. Be on lot U zero zero one six one two A. Second the motion. <laughs> All those in favor? It's really strange if that was denied. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then we have three. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, two tree growth penalties. Uh, this is in regards to lot R forty nine dash three on School Street. It's a sixty two point eight eight acre lot. The current owner of this property purchased the property in June 15th of 2021. At the time of sale, 51.4 acres was classified as tree growth. Um, pursuant to 36 MRSA 581-1A, a certified letter was mailed on 12-27-21 to the owner informing uh, the new owner of the tree growth requirements of the main law and the option to transfer the tree growth to open space um, if that was or a second cert and a second certified letter was mailed on June 27th of 22, issuing a $500 administrative penalty for failure to comply with the requirements of 36 MRSA 547-B3 and 4. Uh, the deadline to submit the application as stated in the second notice letter was December 27th of 22. As of today, the assessing department has not received an application nor written request to transfer the acreage in tree growth to open space. This failure to comply resulted in a second $500 penalty against the parcel pursuant to 36 MRSA 581-1A. Uh, therefore, it is recommended that the select board approve a $500 supplemental assessment for noncompliance in the tree growth program. 
So just to be clear, this is not actually a tree growth penalty, but no. an administrative fee. Right. Are they still? Are we still looking forward to a tree growth penalty? Uh, yes. This is uh, the, the solar farm that's out on uh, School Street. Yep. And it wasn't operative as of April first. Okay. It's uh, it'll, it'll come out eventually, but they were supposed to take it out when they purchased it or within a year, and they didn't do that. Gotcha. Okay. Paul, how, how often do you um, have to keep doing the administration to like, remind them or, or get that like if it's we go we go through the tree the uh, tree growth and uh, the farmland pen properties every year, okay. and then you know we send them whatever letters that we need to to tell them they got to come into compliance they got to renew their tree growth plan or you know uh, in such as farmland they have to prove that they produce so much income every two years I think it's a couple thousand dollars so if we don't get that then we send certified letters and notifying them if they don't comply then we issue these penalties and yeah. eventually we remove it from the from the program how long does it take to remove it from the program probably about a year or so I was going to say because it is we should be Assessing them at yeah. that higher value that whole time is, you know, we should be, you know, putting a supplement on that, shouldn't we? Yeah, the, per, the penalty is a certain percentage of the, the right. value when it's taken out. So, you know, <laughs> the longer it waits, I mean, the bigger the penalty is going to be for them. But, yeah, hmm. we, should, we'll, we will be assessing that. Well, the, the, yeah, the, the penalty is a certain percentage. But right. if they're not in tree growth or open space now... Right. then that should be taxed at the highest possible yeah. Yeah. for that, yes. correct? Yes. And it's not at that point right now. That's right. So we're losing money. It'll, but it's coming. It's but you'll get it back in the penalty. Yeah, what the, pen yeah the, the, penalty is, the penalty is currently accruing. But not the full tax. Yes. Can I add input to that? No, 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 I don't think you can. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I wouldn't love your input, but I don't think you can. <laughs> um, but yeah, okay. Um, any other questions? Uh, hear a motion. Mm -hmm. I'll make a motion to approve the five hundred dollars supplemental assessment for non-compliance in the tree growth program for tax map lot R zero four nine dash three. I'll second that. Any further discussion? I have one other one other question. So we're assessing them now. Can we assess them again? An additional penalty before the assessment takes place? The assessment the, penalty. The next penalty. The administrate. Can we assess them? The uh, next penalty will be the rem removal. Removal. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you for time. Let's get that. So basically, yeah. they're going to get a bill for five hundred dollars, and if they don't right. rise up, they're going to get a bill for like. Fifty thousand dollars, something like that. that. And that'd be the tax. Yeah, that'd be the that'd be the that'd be the real tree growth penalty. Okay. So yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, motion and a second. All those in favor? All right. All right. Next one is um, another tree growth penalty. Uh, it's map R fifty two lot two. It's off Old Sanford Road. It's a thirty two point oh eight acre lot. Uh, Maine state law states that for a parcel of land to remain in the tree growth program. The landowner must submit a statement every 10 years from a licensed professional forester stating that the landowner has managed the parcel in accordance with the forest management and harvest plan and then a forest management and harvest plan is in place uh, for at least the next 10 years. Additionally, the landowner must provide attestation that the landowner's primary use for the tree growth's classified portion of the parcel is to grow trees to be harvested for commercial use pursuant to MRSA 574-B4. So pursuant to Title 36, main MRSA Section 581-1A, we have contacted the property owner requesting compliance that the tree growth tax law and notified the property owner of the 10-year requirement. We contacted the pro property owner with letters and through email on December 21st of 21 and July 27th of 22, requesting an updated plan and attestation or transfer the property to open to the open space program. As of this date, no such request information has been provided for the same parcel. This failure, the failure to comply has resulted in a $500 penalty against the parcel. 
Therefore, it is recommended that the select board approve the $500 supplemental assessment for non-compliance in the tree growth program. So this isn't even us. This is Maine state law. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So when you, this says the letters, but it says you also emailed. Did you get a response to the email? Nothing. Nothing? Okay. So many people just drop off the face of the earth, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I'll hear a motion. Sorry. I'll uh, make a motion to approve the recommended $500 supplement assessment for noncompliance in the Truth Growth Program to tax map lot R052-2. I second the motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. Thanks, Paul. Thank, Thank you, Paul. You. Thank I always appreciate you wait to the very end because <laughs> that's where, <laughs> that's where the supplements and abatements are. <laughs> All right. Uh, second public comment. If you have a public comment and you wish to speak, stand now. <laughs> State your name and address for the record, please. Hi, my name is Les Bodwell, 33 Pigtail Lane, Berwick. Uh, the only comment that I was going to make is, coincidentally, I have a solar farm, and I had the property was in tree growth. So I think, I think when that property finally comes out of tree growth, the penalty is going to be based on the value of the property at the time they take it out of tree growth. So if they put a $10 million solar farm on that property, that tree growth penalty is going to make up, certainly make up for the fact that, you know, possibly they should have been being assessed for the um, a different value over the last couple of years. So I, I, they're making a horrible mistake. <laughs> yes. Yes, they are. Keep up with your taxes. So don't let that stuff get away from you. Um, any other public comment? All right. Closing the public comment. We have an executive session uh, for discussion of personnel. So we will not be making any votes on that. We will be leaving the, the camera feed and not be coming back out. Uh, does anyone else have any business to discuss before we enter executive session? Um, just again, I just want to reiterate, it's awesome to see people wanting to come out and, and volunteer and, and volunteer your time to the board and planning board in this case and you know for the three of you thank you for putting yourselves out there and um, Mr. Hook I, I, I do hope you do look at some of the other things that are there because I, I know especially comp plan um, and envision Burke are two things that are really really put a lot of the volunteers put a lot of time into the two things that really go into um, into the town and, and what the future is going to be looking like in town um, you know and, and then for the two new planning board members you know you, you both kind of alluded to it too you know um, stick to that land use ordinance as written. You know, our, our personal bias, even when we sit up here, whether I agree with something or disagree with something, when it when it comes to what I have to vote on, it's what what the rule is at the time. So that's my one my one bit of advice because, as as you both have seen, sitting on that side of it, um, it's 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 not always a thankful job. It's a it's a thankless job that you sit up there and and sometimes that decision may or may not be what you want it to be either. Um, but it, it is that decision that we have to make. Um, and just for anybody else out there, please, there's a lot of stuff to get involved in. And, and it's really nice to see. I know when, when Linda and I first ran, um, yes, there was more people than seats going. But I, I feel like the last couple of years, I'm starting to see more and more get involved. Yeah. And, it's, and it's a great, great thing to see in town. So that's yeah. really all I wanted to add. Absolutely. Agree with everything you just said. And there's a lot to be involved with. Envision Berwick, school board, comp plan, you know, Boy Scouts. There's tons. <laughs> well, Scouts. It's Scouts now. Scouts. <laughs> it's Scouts. We are inclusive. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot to be involved in, and you know, the more the better. You know, get a better reading of you know who's in town and what's going on. Yeah. Um, I'll make the motion that we enter executive session under Title One Four Zero Five Six A for discussion of personnel. Second the motion. All those in favor. Good night, folks.